how many calories you absorb in a meal is a really difficult thing to measure. A lot of people will think, oh, well, I can consume this much calories and my body will utilize it, the rest will go to storage. Well, everything is different. But in order to start this video off, I can show you with a really simple analogy in kind of a visual here. So I want you to imagine that this water jug, the water in here, is calories. Food, calories, energy, whatever. This funnel is my digestive system. Okay, this is how quickly things can get absorbed, essentially. And this pot here is like my metabolism. And it's just how quickly things get into my body and are utilized. So if I'm consuming food at just a normal rate, it goes to the funnel and everything just gets absorbed through the digestive system, gets into the stomach. But once I start to actually go too fast, you can see, then I'm backed up and things aren't working. And you can imagine if I were to have continued to pour food in there, eventually it would have overflowed and it would have caused an issue. Okay, it would have made it so that I had inflammation and triggered all kinds of things. <laughs> I wish it was that easy in the human body. It's kind of that easy in a lab, but anyhow. Hey, before we dive into this fully, make sure you hit that red subscribe button, hit that little bell icon, and then after you watch this video, do check out Thrive Market, the membership-based online grocery store. You don't wanna miss the kind of stuff they've got. I use them all the time for my groceries, for my keto options, for my fasting options, and I have some really cool ideas for you in terms of unique foods. So check them out after you watch this video. Now let's get into the science. When we're in a lab or when we're measuring uh, the amount of calories in food, it's actually pretty simple too because we use something known as a bomb calorimeter. Now that's a really simple thing. What that is is a little machine that you put food into and you explode the food. And when you explode the food, then it creates an increase in temperature that elevates water a certain degree. That's how they measure. So when you take a look at a label and you see how many calories are in a given food, that's how it's measured. They say, okay, macadamia nuts. We put the macadamia nuts in a bomb calorimeter, we explode them, and how much does it raise the temperature of the water? That's exactly how they figured it out. I wish it was that simple in the body. See, in the body, we have other variables we have to look at. For example, our microbiome. Okay, there is an example that is really, really wild and it's really extreme, but it gives you a matter of perspective. There is a syndrome known as auto brewery syndrome. Okay, it's where people have their gut bacteria so out of whack and for whatever mutation or reason, when they consume starches, their body converts those starches into alcohol and it can get them drunk. So they eat bread and they can get drunk. My point in saying that is things are very different from person to person. See, over 99% of our DNA from person to person is the same, to be completely honest. But only 15% or so of our microbiome is the same from person to person. So it's a wide variance in terms of how our body can utilize carbohydrates, fats, protein, things like that. Another example is going to be cows, right? How on earth can a cow grow to be 2,000 plus pounds off of eating grass, which is predominantly something called cellulose that a human body can't even metabolize? If we were to eat grass and just cellulose, we would starve. So the argument of saying like, oh, well, they're herbivores and you know, the biggest animals on earth eat grass, so you need to go vegetarian, you need to go vegan. That's, although I'm not anti-plant-based, that's just not a fair argument because the gut is completely different in a cow. They have bugs that actually break down the cellulose and make it usable as energy. My whole point here is that what one person consumes in one meal and what another person consumes in a meal are completely different when it comes down to what they're actually going to utilize. Another factor that we have to look at is going to be insulin resistance, right? If someone is diabetic or insulin resistant, their body isn't going to absorb the sugar as much. So their blood sugar is going to stay high and they're going to excrete sugar out of their urine. So they're not extracting the same macronutrients that someone else is. My point in saying this is the whole calories in, calories out thing is completely debunked because it's not comparing apples to apples when you look at individuals. The bioindividuality and our gut biome is so wildly different. Now the other thing we have to look at is fats, right? If someone has poor gallbladder function or they don't have a gallbladder, they're not gonna break down fats. If you go poop in the toilet and it floats, you're not breaking down fats. And that means that you're not getting those fats in your system, which means you're not technically absorbing those calories. So if Bob eats 20 calories from fat and you eat 20 calories from fat and your poop floats, well, Bob is using those calories and probably gaining some fat and you're pooping them out. I know it's crass and I know it's interesting, but the fact is that's a very cold, hard example, right? So we have to pay attention to those kind of things. Now, the other thing we have to look at is timing. Everybody has a different circadian rhythm. Everybody has a different just diurnal rhythm with 
how foods are going to be absorbed and things like that. And there's stuff called chronobiology. People actually look at the timing of our biology, the timing of eating. A perfect example would be if you were to eat carbs just mid-afternoon, randomly, no workout, anything like that, well, those carbohydrates are probably going to get absorbed and they're probably going to get some utilized by the cells and then some's going to go through de novo lipogenesis and get stored as fat. But if you were to work out and then consume carbs, those carbs are going to go to a different place, right? Those carbs are going to restore muscle glycogen, whereas normally they're going to go to the liver. If they go to the liver, then they can do a whole bunch of other things and trigger your blood sugar to spike later on. But if they go to the muscle, they just stay in the muscle. Fun fact, if your carbohydrates are stored in the muscle, they cannot leave the muscle to elevate your blood glucose. That's not the purpose of muscle glycogen. Only liver glycogen can do that. My point in saying that is, again, timing. When you eat something based on activity, based on circadian rhythm, based on stress, is going to largely determine what kind of calories you absorb or how many calories you absorb. So I hate to say this to you, but there is no real answer. It's going to vary widely. I would say on average, most people tend to absorb between 700 to 800 calories in one sitting before things start to change, but that's a really wide sort of ambiguous number, but it gives you at least somewhat of a starting point. So the important thing is to remember your funnel, okay? Your metabolism is here. Your digestion is here. Okay? You want the trickle. You don't want the overflow. You don't want your poop to flow. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.